So this video is going to talk about the log likelihood, the deviance, and AIC. Let's start with how to think about this. Um, we go back to uh, an earlier lecture. So let's go back to basic regression. Um, let's have a, a, a short review of what we did. Okay, so we had some unknown parameters. These, these were the slopes and the standard error of the estimate. And we needed a, a way of picking those. So how do we pick those? Uh, we picked them with the um, least squares criterion. So we minimized um, y minus y hat. Okay, so in other words, we want to choose these parameters to make the fitted values as close as possible in a squared distance sense uh, to the original values. Okay, so we minimize this SSE, and then SSE becomes a, a measure of how well the model fits the data. Okay, so if we come very close to the points, if our predicted values are close to the uh, observed values, uh, then we add up the, you know, these square distances and we get a small number. Okay, if the model doesn't fit very well, then SSE is big. So SSE becomes this um, this fundamental measure of how well you know the model fits the data, and it's fundamental because that's the thing we're we're, we're minimizing. Now from there, we did all sorts of things with uh, SSE. You know, for example, we we divided it by n minus p, which kind of makes like an average of it, and this gives us our mean squared error. Another thing that we did to it was divide by the total sums of squares, SST, um, and that gave us um, you know, the, the fraction of variation unexplained by the model. You take 1 minus that, you get R squared. Okay, uh, we did some other things with it. If you take 1 minus S, uh, the standard error of the estimate over, over the variance, you get an adjusted R squared. Okay, so my, my point with this is um, SSE measures the quality of the fit, and then we can rescale it in, in various ways um, to produce other measures of fit. All right, let's go back to um, uh, log likelihood. With logistic regression, I have a video that derives the likelihood expression. So this is the, the likelihood equation for logistic regression. Now, when we uh, estimate a logistic regression, we want to maximize this quantity. So we're going to pick our parameters, alpha and beta, uh, to make this expression as big as possible. So just like we minimize the sum of squared errors, with logistic regression we want to make this as big as possible. All right, now th this likelihood expression plays exactly the same role as the sum of squared errors in the sense that that is the objective function value. So, so let's go back to the bottle return problem that we did in a previous video. Now, what I want to do is show you how we could compute this quantity uh, if we wanted to. Now, uh, we, we usually don't want to, but I think it's, it's kind of good to uh, you know, confirm that we know how to do that. Um, the reason that we, we usually don't want to do this is because R has already done it for us. Um, but I want to convince you that you know, what R is giving you is just this quantity. Okay, so if we wanted to, um, to compute this, we need to start out with what, what I call a linear predictor. So this alpha plus beta x is the linear predictor. We've been calling that eta. So let's start by computing etas. And here they are. Here are my etas. Um, here are the actual fitted values for that bottle return problem. And my claim is that uh, this first sum can be written as follows. So we're taking you know, the y are, the, um, are these fitted values times the etas. Okay, so fit dollar y times eta. And then we have to weight by the number of cases. That's what that count is doing. So this term gives us the first sum, okay, minus the second term, which is this. Okay, now if you do this, you end up with this number, minus 
1,531. Now, that's, uh, that's a lot of work. Uh, we don't usually want to do that. Instead, if, you, if you're really interested in the log likelihood, there's a function called log likelihood, which gives you that number. So the way to think about this then is that this is the objective function value. We have made this number as large as possible when we did the maximum likelihood. Now, we usually don't use the log likelihood itself. Instead, we use something called deviance. Now, what is deviance? Deviance is simply minus 2 times the log likelihood value. So if we multiply this number by minus 2, we're going to get 3,063-ish. So instead of maximizing the likelihood, what we could do is minimize the deviance, and we get the same answer. Um, all right, and we, we usually use this deviance rather than the log likelihood because uh, we're, we're going to be able to use this deviance in a chi-square test very easily. All right, so deviance you can think of as, as, as an even closer equivalent to SSE um, in that, you know, just as we minimized SSE for linear regression, we're minimizing the deviance for logistic regression. Now, the deviance is such a, a, uh, an important quantity that R and many other software packages uh, report it. So there's a function called deviance in R that returns this number. So this number measures kind of um, uh, how much has not been explained by our logistic regression model, just in the same way SSE quantifies that. Now, another uh, quantity that we'll be using is called AIC. So AIC stands for AN Information Criteria. And this AIC is uh, simply the deviance plus a penalty. So the penalty is going to be two times the number of parameters in the model. We can think of AIC as being a, a related to adjusted R squared. So adjusted R squared was a measure that penalized the model according to the number of parameters in it. There was a little adjustment uh, for having more parameters. Well, um, AIC is, uh, is similar in that it, it also penalizes the number of parameters. It just uses a different penalty. Okay, so if we think about our bottle return problem, we had two parameters in there. We had a, a slope and an intercept. So two parameters times two is four. Our penalty is four. We're going to take this uh, 3062 and add four to it. There's an AIC function in R. Um, so if we add four to this, we get 3066.872. So that's our AIC. Now, um, Let's talk a little bit about some more of the output. When I estimated the bottle return uh, coefficients, we did with a summary on fit, we got two deviances reported to us, the null deviance and the residual deviance. Now the way to think about the null deviance is it's like SST. Okay, so if we, if we go back to, um, I think it was page 35 or whatever it was, 36, um, what did we do? Well, we had an ANOVA table, and this ANOVA table was fundamentally, um, you know, a comparison between uh, the, the null model. So the null model is the model that we would get if, um, you know, the null hypothesis that all my slopes were zero were true. Okay, now if all the slopes are zero, my fitted value is just the intercept. I'm just fitting the intercept, which, uh, which would then be y hat. Okay, so SST is a measure of how much uh, you know, variation would be unexplained using only the intercept. We, we're, what we're doing is we're comparing that model with what we'd get 
having all you know the, the slopes being non-zero if, if, if they want to be okay so this is uh, you know this quantifies SSE is how much is left unexplained using your model this is using the reduced model which is just the intercept all right so going back to our um, example here it was um, this null deviance then is what's unexplained with just the intercept so let's go fit an intercept model and just confirm that, that what I said is true. So if I regress my, um, you know, was the bottle returned on just the intercept? I get this, I call it fit null. The deviance of this is 4158.9, which is exactly what R reports. So this is how much is explained if you don't include the deposit amount, that slope for the deposit amount. Um, as opposed to uh, our full model, which explains this amount. Now, the difference between those is, uh, is very important. So the difference between those uh, you know, is the equivalent of the F test with regression. So if we subtract those two, so take this number less that number, you end up with 1,096. So we can think of this like SSR. So this is the amount uh, of deviance explained by our model. Now, this uh, uh, difference has a chi-square distribution with one degree of freedom. So it's one degree of freedom because the difference between the null model and the full model is, uh, is one, one parameter. Okay, so we wanted to find a p-value testing all of our slopes equals zero. In this case, we only have one slope. We could, we could do it with this. So take the difference of the deviances, that's 1096, pop that into a chi-square distribution as one degree of freedom. The p-value is essentially zero, which means that we're going to reject this null hypothesis and conclude that the slope is non-zero, just as we did up here.